Welcome back to the Holo Project. <sighs> Today, we're going to be working on my 1966 Chevrolet Impala. Four door hardtop, 396 big block turbo 400 car. Original numbers matching unit, about 70,000 miles. We need to pull up the transmission out of it. She's getting a little slippy. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we're going to do today. I could drink a beer and the time it takes to shift from first to second this thing. <laughs> That's the truth. <clears throat> Last winter, we pulled the engine out of this thing, uh, got the heads redone, put a full roller cam in it, roller rockers. Um, nice little Howard's cam, really woke this thing up. Uh, otherwise, everything else here is bone stock. Um, I'll show you a little bit, show you a little bit of the car here. <clears throat> so she's in pretty good shape. Uh, the story with this thing, and this was ordered in January of 65. And <clears throat> the guy picked it up in February of 66. And he owned it until 1979. And he ended up selling it to another guy in 79. He passed away in 81. And this car sat in a garage from 81 until 2018. And it was sold at an estate auction. And then that's basically when I acquired it. Runs and drives, obviously. We take it on a lot of car shows and stuff. It's not perfect. I believe it has one repaint on it. Uh, it had a pretty good size dent right here from stuff falling on it in the garage. <clears throat> a good friend of mine did some PDR work and uh, turned out okay. This metal is extremely heavy, so there is some prick marks in it. Uh, original interior. It's in pretty good shape as well. I haven't done anything in here other than putting these little gauges down there. Uh, just used original holes in the dash to put those in. Uh, and this little armrest just sits on the seat. And let's just show you the back seat. A lot more of the same. Real good shape. No rust on the car. Um, yeah, so this is just a cruiser. <clears throat> Got the nice rally wheels on it still. So we'll set you guys up and we'll get to work pulling this transmission out of this thing. What do you think? Set the beer timer. Oh, hit that. Easy on the F-bombs, making more work for me. <laughs> Hasn't even been a minute into the clip. Dropped an F-bomb. Now that should be point yeah. high. Do the bottom bolts first. We're going to have to try and get the top of the uh, the three bell housing bolts. Oh, yeah. It's going to be kind of hard with it way up in the air. We'll probably get them from the bottom. Give her the old click and then have a tranny sitting there on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> well, got that done already. <laughs> this should take us an hour and a half, but we'll be here till eight o'clock tonight. Yeah. 
Why do something in 15 minutes when you can take all day? Hey, that's true. <laughs> uh, I didn't realize your top glass was chipped. Yeah. Huh. Probably because I never see the windows up. We always have the windows down. <laughs> I know it. Jeez. High speed. The shocks look nice under here. Yeah, they do. Got yeah, yourself a certain amount of rubber underneath these uh, tires here. <laughs> I wonder why. Come out. You guys will notice my brother likes to just lay it around on the ground and giggle. <laughs> <laughs> You never know what he's up to because he's giggling about something. <laughs> uh huh. All right, speedo cables disconnected. Uh, ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> no. All right. Gonna show you guys what we got going on under here. Oh, Matt's back here popping the drive shaft. Come up here. <laughs> Couldn't be trusted. Pretty, pretty clean unit under here. I've got uh, two and a half inch. Pipes, X pipe exhaust on it. Sounds really nice. So I'm just kind of working this side to get the shift linkages disconnected. Speedo cables disconnected. I'll pull that drive shaft out of there. If you got a bucket, catch that tranny fluid. <laughs> Yeah, there's probably a bucket laying around somewhere. I don't remember which one you use for antifreeze and which one you use for oil. Uh, there isn't an antifreeze one anymore. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Took care of it. Recycled. <laughs> I don't feel like rolling around in an Exxon Valdez oil slick today. And Dahmer already left his mark down there at the shop. Yeah. So. That's a bitch. Uh, huh. Come on. You know you want it. Get that drive shaft popped out of there. Uh -huh. There she goes. Make sure I lose the U-joint cap and scatter needle bearings everywhere. That's what we normally like to try to do. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, take a nap and then get that dust cover off of there. I got one bolt that's holding up over here on this side. The a three height. <laughs> Henry the height. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or seven sixteenths, one of the two. There's two of them down here. What are you working on? This flywheel cover. Dust oh. cover. And I just give you seven sixteenths for the... Yeah. Certainly did. Well, then I ain't getting back off the ground to get you another one. Are you sure about that? Oh. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, not getting any thinner. If I was smart, I would have got these top bolts on the bell housing from the top. <laughs> Is that why they call them the top bolts? Uh-huh. <laughs> but I'd rather struggle for a while today instead of making things easy on myself. <sighs> Isn't that what you guys like to do at home, too? <laughs> struggle your ass off all day long.
hit her with the high speed. Yeah, it's made that look easy. I don't think it fit right with that new torque. Converter. I think that's why. Maybe. I don't know. So we did put a different torque converter in this car. It's still not correct. Yeah. This car came with a 1400 in it. This is an 1800. And uh, the conditions have to be perfect for this car to do a burnout. And by perfect, I mean wet concrete, cold tires, dust, fresh, freshly started up engine, <laughs> gravel dust helps. But uh, this cam doesn't get in any power until 2500 RPM. Yeah, probably in there. So, yeah, the engine is a little. She is a little tired, but he gets the job done. It's for cruising. Yep. It's for cruising. All right. Now, if I can get my double chin out of the way here so I can see the bolts, I'll just go ahead and get this cross member out of here. Maybe it's time for another nap. I don't know. Well, I was thinking it was time for a drink. Yep. It's one thing about a Coors Light. It never lets a guy down. It does fill you up, though. <laughs> Remember those old Miller Light commercials? Uh, Great taste that never fills you up and never lets you down. Wasn't that Bud Light? <laughs> Not sure, now that you say it. Why don't you guys comment down below and tell us which one it was? Yeah. Yeah, why don't you? Fill up that comment section. <laughs> Let me know what I could improve on. <laughs> it's too bad there wasn't a floor drain in here that we could drop a couple <laughs> bolts in. <laughs> I was just going to say something about that. <laughs> I have a reason that I work by that. <laughs> Reason number one is it's just an open pit that's only about a foot deep. So anything in there you can just grab. And reason number two, you guys all know that when you drop a bolt, that thing look that thing ricochets and goes flying a thousand feet from where you actually dropped it. And then you never find it again. Yeah. So that being said, if they fall down in that uh, pit there, I know where they are. And I can just leave them there until I grab them. <laughs> You'll always know where they are because they're always going to fall in the pit. Mm -hmm. Got the Moseys today. <laughs> nice and slow. It's because we drank a lot last night. That's just a relative term. That's <laughs> what happens when your relative comes to town. <laughs> you guys ever drop a washer and have it go down the sleeve of your sweatshirt? <laughs> Good, because I do all the time. You guys probably love watching me struggle with shit. <laughs> I get beat up 90% of the time, and that's fine, because I still enjoy it. It wouldn't be working on cars if you weren't getting your nuts kicked in. There. Crying out loud. Loud noises. Oh my god! Sound like a sound like a damn. <laughs> Let's watch Bob struggle. <laughs> we can do it as a part party. Oh. All right, next up, we got those two training mount bolts, and. Mm, that appears to be <laughs> the wrong size. Indeed. And then we can really get after it. Rip and tear and tear and rip. The tight. I think I forgot to tell everybody. This car's name is blue collar. 
-hmm. Because it's blue. It's blue. And it has a collar. And yep. that's all I've ever done my whole life is blue collar work. And uh, I rewarded myself with the purchase of this vehicle. I'm going to raise, raise this side up. How many bolts do you got out of your bell housing? All of them? Uh, two. Okay, I'm going to leave that top one on my side. That's all that I have is. Uh huh. Just as I thought. Okay, uh, torque cord is done, drive shaft's done, speedo cable, done. kick down's done, shift linkages is done, we need training lines, we need to loosen the pan a bit, drop some of this fluid out so we don't drop the fluid on the floor. What's a pan a bit? Drop this pan a bit, <clears throat> we can uh, put a jack under this and get that cross, that uh, training sport out. Uh, yeah. And then I reckon it's probably time to drop this baby out of here. Yep. Don't take nothing but a little bit of work. Nailed it. Here we go. Oh. It's the call of the wild. when you cook a good breakfast on the Blackstone this morning. <laughs> I know. Yep. What are you doing? Shooting plasma ray in my eye? <laughs> Come on. Oh! I love it when a plan comes together. There's that beautiful red tranny fluid. Mm -hmm. I guess I didn't tell you guys that we have obviously had this out because we put a different torque converter in it. But we also changed out the filter and the fluid. And we did see uh, some material in the pan. And this transmission has never been rebuilt with 71,000 miles on it. So... The one-two shift, like Matt said, you can pretty much drink a 12-pack in between the, the shift. Uh, so it's just time to freshen them up. And lucky for me, he knows how to rebuild transmissions. He does he does a ton of them. So, Yep, it's a curse. If any of you want a transmission rebuilt, <laughs> oh, <laughs> 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 ship it to him. And he'll get you taken care of because he's got all the time in the world to do them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Moving on. Not that done already. Okay. We're ready for uh, cross member. There you go. Right in there. Okay. Okay. Uh... There, there she is. Put her all the way up there in that turbo 350 position. Yep. Or power glide, probably. I'm betting. All right, so now... Now I'm up, way up yonder. Well, that's got me jammed bigger. Than, there we go. There. All right. That'll work. Okay. All right. So I still have that top bolt. Yep. Do you have your top bolt still? Yep. Just let that down and we can right up over the top. <laughs> I always forget this Cyclops light has two more settings on it. Uh, yeah, you don't even need it on ultra bright retina burner. Uh-uh. Stage one is just plenty. I wonder if I can reach up and around that thing with a, with a so, uh, 
along a deep well, a deep socket, and get that. That's how we got it in there. Yeah. But we did them from the top. Yeah. Okay, there's that one. All right, pull your dipstick tube out of there. Okay, I'll just wiggle it back, get it off them dowel pins. Oh, there she went. And then... You want me to run the jack? Sure. Ready? Yeah. Okay. Here she comes. Yeah, let me double check. Make sure everything's clear. Hi there. Clear on this side. And then just connected. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> you want to slide? You want me to slide it off the jack? Yeah, we're probably gonna have to pull it out the front. Yeah, I, know. I think I'll pull the jack forward. <laughs> uh oh! Quick! 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 Perfect. <laughs> uh, what? We're going to take the car up a little higher. Yeah. She ain't going to make it. Nope. Mm. All right. Well, there she is. Out of the car. And we'll show you once we get it drug out. Now that we got the transmission out, we're going to go ahead and tear it down, do an assessment real quick on the garage floor. And if you guys have never seen the inside of an automatic transmission, uh, they're kind of neat, uh, kind of spooky. You can get a little, uh, a little overwhelming, but uh, just like anything else, persistency and uh, learning as you go, and you'll be a okay. So let's get this baby tore on down. All right. Okay. What do we got to do first? The uh, governor cover and then the pan and then the speedometer, uh, speedometer in the side. Well, governor, let's do the governor cover first. It's over here. Right there. Oh, well, let's just pull the damn thing back out yeah. of there. Okay. Good enough. All right, set her there. I get my seven sixteenths. Yeah. Okay. All right, here we go. Governor cover removal. Mm. I need a tappy tap. I think there's one. If anybody's curious on these Turbo 400s, if you want to change your shift points, you can buy a weight kit, weight and spring kit for these governors. And depending on the weight and spring combo that you use, will change your shift points. A lot of people talk about just using the. Uh, A lot of people talk about this uh, vacuum modulator, and really all that does is change how firm the shift is. But this governor, as you'll see when we pull it out, it's got uh, weight and springs in it set. <clears throat> so you have to find the right combination. It takes a lot of testing and tuning. Um, but essentially these, these little wings fling out with the speed. and Moves your valve here. Two sets of weights, springs. Good stuff in there. That's where the magic happens. <clears throat> this car shifted at 2400. Or sorry. <laughs> this car shifted at 4200 RPM, I believe, from the factory. Somewhere around in there, 5000. And with that cam that we put in it, we changed, we changed it and brought it up to 5800 with those 
That's your vacuum modulator. Okay, let's pop that pan off quick and then we'll put her put her in the bucket. There's that five eighths again. <laughs> oh. That five eighths has been haunting us all day. All day. Pop the old pan off. Nice and clean in there still. Mm-hmm. Well, there's two little itty-bitty magnets in there. Mm-hmm. Got the return of the sludge here. It's uh, crystally. It's time to find out what that is. Uh, Your rags are right there. For as few miles as it has on there. I don't know what that gunk is. Okay, we can put it in the bucket here. Okay, so we got the filter out of there. Here's your filter extension tube. There should be an O-ring. There should be an O-ring. <laughs> when we put it back together, we'll put two O-rings on there, get that baby sealed up good. It's one of the tricks for you for your Turbo 400. Uh, pop this valve body off of here. We aren't going to go into specifics for you right now. We're just going to get it tore down. Okay, there we go. Got all of our half inch headed ones off of there. Now we got to drop down to the 7 16 ones. Let's take this uh, retention device off of here for our rooster comb, as they call it, or I call it. Uh, you got a 7 16 and a 3 8 drive. Probably right here. There's still flies in January? Well, it's been awfully warm here. I'll be damned. I figured we had one of those out already. Apparently I not. I thought I did. It's always interesting to me that everything back in the day was made out of cast iron. Everything made today is made out of aluminum. All your newer valve bodies are all aluminum. And we got our governor tubes back there. Uh-huh. <clears throat> Could probably pop those out of the case.
I might have to lift that up and get that out of there to pop those governor tubes out. The angle is too awkward. It was a funny angle. It was a funny angle. Hey, Tyrone! Back at home, I would uh, do this on a workbench. Clean. Sanitary. Before I tear down, show you guys what's going on here. We'll just knock her out in this bucket style format here. Back in the bucket. Uh, let's let her sit there. I'll pop that reverse servo cover off here. Quick like. This is uh, your reverse servo cover. Fluid pressure activates your servo, which engages the band which makes your car go in reverse. Looks pretty clean. It does. Gave her that good old fluid flush. Mm-hmm. Okay. Off comes the servo cover. Set that to the side. Put your bolts in there so you don't lose them. Here's a steel uh, gasket. New one of those comes in the kit. Then you just uh, rock that back and forth. Pull that out. Here's your servo pin that presses on your band in there which engages reverse <coughs> okay get your uh, switch off of here Set those babies to the side. This is your separator plate. You can drill, you can enlarge your shift point holes or your shift holes in there for firmer shifts. If you're into that kind of thing. This is your uh, overrun band. Servo, this pin uh, presses forward and engages on your overrun band, which is also called like a coast clutch. Uh, that's what slows your vehicle down if you drop her down from drive into second. That band activates and drags your, lets the engine, uh, engine brake. So... I need a 3 8 tw uh, 12 point, if, you, if and you got one. Really no special tools required to tear one of these things down. Okie dokie, here we go. Pull the check balls out. Two, three, four, five, six. I don't want to hear any guff about using a magnet to pull check balls out. <laughs> I wonder if we should do that. Uh, does that is that air compressor regulated? Yeah. Can you drop it down? Yeah. Like Fifty pounds. Oh, that was loud. I won't be able to really test any of the other clutches, but I can test this intermediate one here. Doesn't sound bad. These I can. This one's reverse. Nah. Need a rubber tip for it. Oh, here. 
Oh, there you go. So, <clears throat> see that magic trick? <laughs> For Pete's sake. Oh, piece of gasket. Okay. So, this one over here is going to be uh, direct or your third gear, one to one. This one here in the middle is second gear. And this one over here is reverse. So, I'll try and get these to apply. Uh, I'm not sure how successful I'll be because the tip won't extend all the way down in there. Nope. Nope. <laughs> mystifying isn't it <laughs> literally well, second gear applies and it sounds okay oddball okay uh, we're going to have to pull out your regulator valve here on the side Perfect. That's for the vacuum modulator. <clears throat> Guess I don't need to grunt and groan. <laughs> that makes things easier. Yeah. I do not like the way that feels at all. your center support bolt there it's a 3 8 12 point it is different than a turbo 400 in length but not in size and it's hollow because that's where your air pressure go or your fluid pressure goes through to uh set second gear what do you mean by different than a turbo 400 or i meant a 4 4 l ade oh so this is a turbo 400 center support bolt. A 4L80 center support bolt is probably a half inch longer. Other than that, they're the same. So don't mix them up. If you had 1,400 things laying around. Okay, now we can get into the pump. <clears throat> Take the pump out. Got yourself like seven bolts here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, or eight. Okie dokie. Now I need a little pry bar. To pop that pump out of there. How about a massive one? Let's use a massive one. <laughs> Just For reach down in there. Wiggle. Pop it out. They do make a special tool that will grab on the stator. Like I have. Done there. And uh, pull it out that way. Kind of collars around and uses the input shaft as a. Kind of like your uh, harmonic balancer puller. But different so there's the pump we can take a look inside of there uh rings look okay <clears throat> we'll replace them for the people at home that may not know turbo 400s and 4l ades are very similar transmissions very similar in fact uh they're almost identical from where we are right now down. So your forward drum, your direct drum, intermediate, all that stuff looks the same in them. Uh, some of them you can even interchange. From here on up on a 4L80 is your overdrive section um, and fourth gear. So that's the difference in them really. In a, in a very broad uh, speak. So next out, we'll uh, pull your forward drum out here. 
Uh, this is your forward clutch, and just as the name implies, it makes you go forward. These are on all the time, except for in reverse. So uh, when you put your car in gear, your forward clutches come on. We'll tear that down as a subsection here, if you'd like. Next to come out of the box, these are your direct drum. Direct meaning third gear one to one. It has a roller spread on the back side. And there's a different number of elements on the inside here. You can have, I don't know, I think it's an eight. Eight element sprag all the way up to uh, 36. Some aftermarket ones are, uh, these are very expensive if you buy aftermarket for a high performance transmission. This is your direct clutch. Next is the coast band. Thing never gets used as I implied here or as I said here this is where the band gets applied it's seated stationary on uh, the transmission case and it uses a servo to push here clamps that around the the drum <sighs> all right now into the case we go we have to pull out a snap ring. Um, this retains your intermediate clutch. You just trim it to size. Uh, that gives you, it's a heavier, way heavier duty snap ring. Uh, next is second gear. This is your second gear clutch. You can see what the long engagement, the slipping, the roasting of that clutch there. That would be why you can drink a 12 pack in between your shifts. Yeah. So there's your roasted second gear clutch. You might have one good one out of the three. Nope. <laughs> uh, we'll just clean this up. There's a couple of hot spots in it, but we'll clean it up. A little scotch bright. Fix her right up there. Uh, so, with that, that means that maybe you have a pressure leak issue. It could be in the apply piston here. I'll get that out here for you. And this is a one-way snap ring here. I'll show you. It's a trapezoidal kind of looking-ish. Okay, so here's your shape. You might be able to see by the end here. So this, this side goes up. Flat side goes down if you're ever doing one of these things. And the case is machined that way. So that fits in the case. That, uh, that's that. Okay, now we will get these uh, parking pawl. Get the parking pawl released here. This is when you put your car in park. This is what locks it. So you don't roll down the hill. <laughs> so you don't roll down the hill. Mm -hmm. Don't want to do a Jack and Jill. <laughs> New transmission is the parking pall is uh, very, very wimpy and uh, <laughs> surprisingly strong for, for what it is, but they can be broken. Mm -hmm. Got it.
Yeah, this is a parking pole lever or the retainer. This is the lever here. And we'll show you what it fits down into. You can see the, the beak on that. Uh, and then we'll show you here. Here's another specialty tool. Yep. Vice grip. <clears throat> you can pick those up at your local Lowe's Menards Home Depot. <laughs> yeah. You're just going to go ahead and grab the shaft here. And uh, and then you just give her the old one, two. Ready? One, two. There's your guts. Okay. Uh, should be nothing left in the thing. There's your reverse band here. That's what grabs hold of your uh, drum here and uh, right here. Mm -hmm. And that's what grabs hold and stops rotation. So your planetary grabs and goes the other way. Um, this is your thrust washer assembly for down in the bottom. Uh, this one's going to get a rollerized uh, flat. Don't forget to install that. Flat bearing. <laughs> yeah. And you'll uh, you'll have lots of slop. <laughs> lots of slop. So. <sighs> okay. Now, uh, let's go ahead and I'll show you some of these other things here. So, this is your output shaft. Speedometer cable and your governor ride on these two. Helical gear? Yeah. Helical gears. Helically cut gears. This is your center support here. Off that comes. Uh, here is your race for the sprag here. Your thrust washer. That would fit down in here. Okay. It's your sun gear shaft. This is your silencer ring, as they call it. That would fit here. Uh, your 4L80, some of them have this. Not very many of them anymore. I don't remember when they quit putting them in, but I uh, just don't use them. They must have found that they aren't worth it. Another thrust washer that fits here. Uh, just looking to see where that stuff come from in the bottom of the pan. You check the, you check your uh, sun gear here, or your, not your sun gear, your planetary gears here for rock and up and down movement. This is in really good shape, really good shape. So <clears throat> we like to hear that. Yeah. There's your drag or roller clutch. Looks like there's a little bit of. Oh, well, that's or where they that assemble just... it. Oh. Yeah. And of course, you would. Uh, you would want to put that in the correct way, otherwise uh, you would have a non-functioning tranny. Bearings seem to be okay. That fits in there like that. Uh, here's your sun gear itself. You look at the teeth on the side. You look down them and you look for Pitting and wear, sharpness, uh, anything out of the ordinary looks to be in pretty good shape. Um, and then, of course, you got your second one down here. And then you you would separate that at this point here. That looks like it got a little warm. It might have been heat treated, though. Oh. Make it hard. Uh, it's interesting. I don't know where that material is coming from. 
in the pan. Okay, so uh, let's see how deep in the weeds do we want to go here? That's up to you. Let's look at the direct clutch clutches. I don't have a feeling that these are bad. I feel that these are going to be in real good shape. When you tear these things apart, try and do your absolute best to, uh, oh, it's got hot spots in it, your top plate. Mm -hmm. Do your best for organization. Ooh, that's junk. Oh, Ooh. baby. That's third gear. She's gone. Lord have mercy. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Well, nice thing about it is that your clutch kits come with clutch and steel. So, and this one's a wavy. Oh no, it isn't. No, nope, that's a that's a standard one. So, how many we got in here? One, two, three, four, five. And those can be upgraded to six clutches if you really wanted to. This application uh, probably not warranted. So uh, the nice thing about these older ones is this aluminum piston here. It has a lot of engagement area. So it's got those two rings that push up on the on the steel plate here for the apply. And uh, people search for those nowadays because in the later transmissions, they just have uh, just a steel molded piston in there with a rubber on the outside. So, uh, yep, there's that. You got a wimpy snap ring here. Uh, that can be upgraded to a spiral lock that makes two wraps around. Uh, and that's nice because that'll hold this retainer on here so your roller clutch doesn't pop off. Uh, when you're tearing these down, you want to feel in there uh, and feel if there's ridges. That doesn't, that's just a witness mark. Uh, that will cause a loss of pressure. We'll do the forward clutch here next. Uh, go ahead and pop this off of here. Maybe. So here's your top. This thing is really in bad shape. <laughs> that, Fantastic. That forward clutch is roach too. Uh, you got two washers here, fiber on the top, uh, copper on the bottom, on your hub there. Uh, this is, there we go. Woo. That one's a, it's a wavy. Oh. It, it, uh, and a wavy clutch cushions the apply is what it does. So your wavy goes against the bottom of your steel. And can you see the gap in there? And then it gets tight. And then there's a gap. Mm -hmm. So that, that cushions the apply. Uh, it would be, they call it a garage park condition. So when you take and put your car from neutral to reverse, that softens that engagement. So it doesn't go <laughs> bark the tires when you put it in there. And then we got just absolutely fried frictions here. <laughs> so with all of those like that, it makes you wonder if maybe... The, the tranny was run low on fluid at one time. Uh, if the pump has the wrong or is worn a little bit, it could also be your boost, uh, your boost valve assembly here, losing a little bit of pressure. I always replace the boost valves. Um, normally when a boost valve will go bad in a turbo 400 or a 4L80, you'll have uh, stupid pressure rise and it will break things like it'll break the case that, that so these things can make so much pressure so uh, 
let's let's take uh, tear this back part down here and see about see about uh, how that planet looks back there. But otherwise, I'm really satisfied. Good. This thing looks good. And for anybody that doesn't know, clutches are, you know, they're uh, they're like your windshield wipers in your car. <laughs> they don't stay alive forever. I wonder if the amount of years that this thing sat, uh, if that would have done anything with. Probably hardened the rubber seals in it. Uh, so that could also be it. Good thinking. <laughs> oh, you son of a gun. Well. Hey guys, sorry about the end of that video. Camera died and didn't really realize it. And also, I've apparently caught a bug. But uh, we're going to wrap that video up there. Uh, episode 2 will be coming out. Matt will be doing a full rebuild on that transmission. So be sure and check that out. Uh, appreciate you guys for watching. Don't forget if you want to subscribe, click the like button. Drop us a couple comments. Definitely appreciate it. Take care and we'll see you in the next one.